If we want fire inside the engine, we need oxygen and we need fuel. Otherwise, combustion cannot occur. Nitrous oxide is not a fuel. Actually, it's the replacement of the air. If we put a spark near the nitrous, nothing will happen. Nitrous oxide is made up of 66% nitrogen atoms and 33% oxygen, while the air that we and the engine breathe is made up of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other gases. Adding N2O is 52% denser. It means that in the same space, we have 52% more oxygen concentration than in the air, and as a result, more fuel can be injected, increasing power. If nitrous is 66% nitrogen, then why don't we use 100% pure oxygen? Well, it's possible, but the power reached would be too much and the temperature too high, melting the engine. Nitrogen also plays a very important role. Cool the cylinder from the inside, allowing safe power increase. In summary, nitrous is also called chemical turbo because what it does is introduce more oxygen into the cylinder. The nitrous, being in the tank, is in a liquid state due to the high pressure. The bottle must be mounted with an inclination because inside there is a curved tube that sucks from the bottom. If the curved tube is at the wrong angle, it could absorb nitrous in a gaseous state. If the bottle does not have an internal sucking tube, it must be used completely inverted. The objective of using the nitrous in a liquid state is that when it comes out of the bottle, the nitrous will change to a gaseous state and when it changes state, it cools down. This cold produced will cool the surrounding air improving engine power. This is called latent heat of vaporization. If no sucking tube is used, the cold will be produced in the bottle and wasted. Nitrous cylinders usually charge 70 bar or 1000 psi of pressure, but as the nitrous is used up, the pressure in the cylinder tends to decrease. If the pressure decreases, the next nitrous shot will be less powerful than the previous one. That's why an electric bottle heater is usually used. The bottle warmer is responsible for heating the bottle, forcing the nitrous to expand and rise the pressure, making all nitrous shots similar and being able to extract every last drop. In the event that the pressure rises too high due to a fault, the relief valve opens, releasing the nitrous to prevent the bottle from exploding. Continuing on the way of the nitrous, we then find the solenoid valve. This valve only opens when the button is pressed and closes when it is released. Then we get to the fogger. It's basically the place where the nitrous comes out, and its objective is to cause a mist that mixes perfectly with the rest of the air that goes into the engine. This fogger can have different calibrations to regulate the amount of nitrous that is sent to the engine. Kits usually come with pre-calibrated nozzles of 30, 50, or 70 horsepower. Nozzles over 100 horsepower are not recommended in small engines because the amount of nitrous delivered instantly is so high that it causes misfires and errors in the computer. In these cases, there are two stage kits consisting of two solenoid valves and two foggers. First it opens a kit, and a second later it opens the second kit, delivering power more evenly and giving the computer more time to react. While we're on foggers, let's talk about wet and dry nitrous systems. Dry kit is when the fogger injects only nitrous as we are seeing now. When the nitrous is injected, the fuel injectors must supply the additional fuel. Dry nitrous systems can only be used on reprogrammed injection vehicles. If it were to be used in carbureted vehicles, the increase in fuel would never occur, so there would be no extra power, in addition to leaning the fuel mixture and causing catastrophic damage to the engine due to high temperature. The wet system is for all engines, no matter how they run. The fogger has two inputs, one nitrous and one fuel. Just the right amount of nitrous and fuel is supplied for optimum combustion. The risks of breaking down due to lean fuel mixture are low. Also with this method, it's not necessary to install larger injectors as it can happen with a dry system. It's not necessary to remap the motor with small doses of power. In summary, the wet system is the most suitable for standard vehicles. The dry system is best for vehicles with high levels of modifications as with the right software and the right size injectors, finer tuning and higher performance can be achieved. Another parameter that must be taken into account is that nitrous accelerates combustion, so the ignition must be delayed, and thus avoid fatal knocking that will end up destroying the engine. At what revolutions should the red button be pressed to inject the nitrous? In original vehicles and without reprogramming, it must be injected at more than 4000 RPM and always with the accelerator pedal fully down. This is for the following reasons. One. Above 4,000 RPM, the engine spins so fast that the time for air to enter the engine is very short, 
and as a result, the cylinder is partially filled giving less power. This can be easily seen from the torque curves of all motors that as RPMs increase, torque drops. Injecting the nitrous in this area provides the oxygen that the engine is lacking and thus increases torque. 2. Connecting rods resist torque. Therefore, recovering torque from this lost zone does not compromise the life of the engine, since at no time is the torque that comes from the factory being exceeded. If the N2O was used at the point of maximum torque, the extra oxygen would increase the torque so much that the engine could explode. 3. When the accelerator pedal is fully down, the computer tends to retard the ignition. The ignition advance caused by the N2O becomes minimal. However, it's always advisable to reprogram the motor. 4. Using nitrous at a very low RPM would be pretty silly, as lowering the gear would be more effective. Remember that the bottle only contains a little gas, so you have to use it strategically and not waste it. Explained this, we will continue with the nitrous purge. The nitrous tank has a manual valve. It only serves as a safety measure and avoid nitrous leakage. When the tank valve is closed, the nitrous from the hoses discharges. And then, when we want to inject nitrous, first all the accumulated air will come out, and added to the extra fuel, the engine will choke. To prevent this, we need to install a new solenoid valve at the end of the hose that will simply vent out, taking all the air out of the hoses. In case of a turbo, it's recommended to direct the purge to the intercooler to produce a cooling effect. Why do we have to freeze the bottle to fill it? There are two reasons. First, because to load the nitrous you have to connect it to another bottle. To speed up the process, the receiving bottle is frozen, lowering the pressure. As there is a greater pressure difference, the fluid flows faster. Second, because when the main bottle is already somewhat used, it has less pressure, therefore you have to help it so that the second bottle can be filled 100%. Freezing is the opposite of the electric heater used to extract every last drop. As final data, the nitrous is used as an anesthetic for dental interventions, so it's usually obtained in places where hospital gases are sold. Nitrous can also be used by young people in the wrong way. And from there, nitrous got its name of laughing gas. In this video, we show the single fogger kits which are easier to install and work quite well, but in cases of maximum performance, multi-point kits should be installed. The fogger instead of going before the throttle body should be positioned in the intake manifold. If you got to this part, it's because you liked the video. So I ask you to leave your like and subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends. My name is Francis. Thanks for watching and see you next time with Methanol.